If I put Hold a gun on. on the bottom of my soccer shoe, will it make me better at kicking? Right, the real reason I'm making this is I got a new tool, a milling machine. And of course, the first thing I want to make is a gun. But I'm Australian and they won't let me. So I figure this soccer boot is a good middle ground. And if you don't know what a milling machine does, it was one of the first great machines invented by humanity that grinds grain into flour. And mine is pretty good at that, but it also uses these multi-directional cutting bits to cut metal in any direction you want. Alex? Alex? Hang on. You aren't milling yet. You're dreaming. You still need to get it off your ute. And buying big machines is very easy, but moving them is the hard part, which is why I put off getting a milling machine for so long. And after six hours of pushing, pulling, cutting into my tray, and regretting that I'm not a cooking channel, we finally managed to get the milling machine on the engine hoist and onto the stand. And I really did consider just keeping this 500 kilo machine in the back of the ute and then traveling Australia, making a mobile service for kids that need guns and their bicycles fixed. But to do that, I need to learn how to use it first. And in order to get accurate cuts, I first need to line up this vise so it's completely perpendicular with the milling head. And to do this, I'm gonna use this dial indicator and I'll let you in on a little machining secret. You touch it on this side and then make it zero. And then you run it all the way along the vise and then you just turn this to zero. And now no matter how wonky your vise is, it will always read as being straight. And now I can start. And I'm gonna use this bandsaw to cut the metal down first. And here's another hot machining tip for you. Place a spring under the bandsaw to soften the fall of parts when they finished cutting. Okay, now my part is hidden somewhere within this metal block. Sorry, this metal block and it's time to take the first cuts, which at first I was excited about, but then I learned that milling is mostly using these things to constantly make sure your parts remain square every time you move anything around. But luckily my milling machine also came with this digital readout that makes working with the machine so much easier. All I need to do is type in what I want, and then the machine does all the work. What the fuck? This production has changed dramatically, dude. What is happening? These boys. I've faced one side, but now discovered something pretty annoying about milling. It produces and throws the sharpest metal chips out of any of the machines I own. Oh, trust me, chat, I know. For example, let's say you have a brother that has the same bad brain that I did a thing has, right? Let's say he loves milling a lot. Let's say he loves milling a lot and then wears his shoes in the house after he's done milling. Sometimes you find those fucking chips in your living room. It's great. Wonderful stuff. Fine which makes being barefoot in the garage very fun. That is a good one. And after an hour of cutting, I now have exactly the same piece I started with, except it's flat. Then I just cut out some chunks with the bandsaw while I worked out what I'm actually doing. Now the plan is to have a shoe and then underneath I have this mechanism which slides and there are rounds in the back that will get squished when the ball hits the front of the mechanism and then they go off blasting this hammer out the front into the ball. So I tidied up the side parts and then drilled some holes. And even though I have a digital readout to tell me exactly where the middle is, my holes are still off center 
Straighter than they usually are though. Next I made the hammer, which is going to make contact with the ball. And I'm going to use this spear gun shaft for the pistons, which is made out of super strong steel. And then press fit it into this block. And press fitting is just a fancy way of saying that I'm just going to hit it really hard with a hammer until it squishes in. And hopefully stays in there and doesn't fly out and kill me or any passerbys whose families might sue me. But I got ahead of myself and forgot that I wanted to cut some grooves into these pins to put some o-rings in. So that way I'd get a nice airtight fit in the barrel. But before I could put it in my lathe to do that, I forgot again and hit in the other pin. But it's actually a good thing, as I already get to do my first test and see how fast the blank rounds get the hammer flying. Three, two, one. Okay, now with some rounds in it while I cower behind this wall. Bro. Roy. Is that loud? And I got 26 meters a second, but that was only with one round going off, which is not fast enough. It's only 55 miles or 90 kilometers an hour. So I did it again, this time with a tab welded on the end. To... Is he allowed to do that? I'm not so certain he's allowed to do any of the things that he does. Okay. Especially considering that he has been raided by the Australian police before for making like uh making a weapon in the past I don't know why he keeps test it testing their authority squish the rounds better but I respect it because one hell yeah brother and two it's always better to to beg for forgiveness than to ask for permission you know, just like how I'm going to be watching the CNN or whichever channel is con uh, cause ho is hosting the debate. And I set off both rounds, but the chronograph wasn't on. And before I go any further, I need to know how fast I can kick a ball. So when you look it up, the fastest kick ever is 210 kilometers an hour, which is pretty impressive considering how pixelated this man is. <laughs> now me. He's not even wearing his shoe, what the fuck? That's so dumb. And I can kick a soccer ball at 28 meters a second or 100 k's, 63 miles an hour, which is annoying since I'm faster than the device so far, even though I'm barefoot and didn't have a run up. So my plan now is to make a back plate that holds in the shells and stops the gas from escaping out the back and forces it all down the barrels, hopefully increasing the speed. And to do that, I started by making a slot in this piece of metal. And when I'm using a cutting bit like this to take material off the metal, there are two ways to do it. The more dangerous way called climb cutting, where you push the material into the bit in the same way it's spinning. And the safer way is pushing the material into the bit in the opposite way it's going. However, I usually forget which way I'm going. So I found it's easier to just break a bit to let me know I wasn't meant to be going that way. And I'm not sure why, I look so stressed while using the mill, but it's probably because I expect things to snap off and hit me at any moment. Okay, slotted piece done. Now I just need to make a T-shaped firing pin to go in that. And I'm going to do that using a piece of tool steel, which is like... <laughs> he appears to be very anti-shoe. Yeah, he also happens to have the absolute worst nails, like even worse than me, which I respect quite a bit because... It makes my nails look normal and good in comparison, and that makes me happy. Hardest metal I or anyone in the world has in their garage. So hard that it removed all the teeth on my bandsaw without scratching the metal when I tried to cut it. I had it in there for 20 seconds, and there are no more teeth left on my bandsaw. <laughs> and my milling machine didn't like it very much either. And eventually after three hours of slow, horrible cutting where I was only taking a tenth of a mil off at a time while the machine was screaming in my ears telling me to stop. I eventually cut out this firing pin, which after cleaning up will go inside the slot. Fuck me. Why is there a spider in there? <laughs> 
Okay, after another three hours of milling, I got this firing pin, which I tapped some holes into, and now it fits nicely together. Now I also want a way to hold the hammer in, and I'm gonna use magnets. So I cut a slot in the device and then attempted to cut the magnet, which I wouldn't recommend doing in this way, as I snapped it, and now the milling machine is covered in a beautiful, really abrasive magnetic dust that sticks to everything. Oh, I have an idea. <gasps> That's it. Okay, it's time for a test with this setup. And I'm hoping it's faster than the last, as the gash shouldn't be able to escape out the back. And also the hammer is held in, which should increase how the pressure. How the fuck does he know how to do all this shit? I mean, I probably a lot of... He knows how to do all this shit in the same way that, like, a caveman would learn how to do all this shit. It's literally just trial and error. Like, if you gave a caveman all of these tools inevitably a caveman would be like oh let me try this out basically that just a shit ton of trial and error and a litany of osha violations everywhere you look And that was awesome to watch on the slow-mo. You can see both rounds going off and best of all, no gas escaped out the back. And the chronograph is reading 259 meters a second or 600 miles per hour, which seems way too fast. Maybe that was the speed of the gas escaping around the hammer, but I'm just gonna say it's a success. 10 times faster than my foot. Now I need to make the boot for that foot. And I'm gonna use this one. This is a very special soccer <laughs> shoe to me. Show. My mum bought it for me when I was five years old. I played every season of soccer with them. At first I wasn't very good, but eventually, last year, I grew into my shoes and now I'm all right. And I started by bending this piece until it fit around the shoe and then welded it to this plate. Then I welded this piece on top and then welded on some spikes. And now if I stop now, I just have a great way to climb trees. Then I need to work out how I'm actually attaching the device to the shoe, which is why I decided to cut off these tabs that I spent so long making and instead use this linear sliding rail, which will save me some space and weight. Then I attached a stopper at the end. So hopefully when the front of this makes contact with the ball, it slides back hitting the stopper at the end, which will push in the firing pin, setting off the blanks, which will shoot the hammer out of the end. But I don't know if this change will work. So I tested it out. This is some straight up My Hero Academia support class ass weaponry, dude. This is some like, this is like a, a type of weapon that you make for a superhero that will, that's like kick man. Okay. And is, and he just kicks motherfuckers left and right. <laughs> Messy quirk. Okay, now I can put it on the boot. So I permanently welded it on, but. <laughs> what season you on? Four, I'm about to end season four. It's so, it's so good. But I still don't have any idea if just the impact of the soft soccer ball will be enough to actually set off the rounds, which is something I really should have planned for a little bit more. Same with my life, or that my online business was easy to run and more organized. But I can with the sponsor of today's video, Udu. Thanks to Udu, you've got an all-in-one management software Ethical platform reacts. that simplifies day-to-day -day management of any business. With their suite of applications, you can track project progress, deadlines, budget, resources, and collaborate in real time. Focusing on Udu's CRM application, it is a comprehensive, customer-centric tool that helps you manage all your business needs. With it, you can easily track your leads, manage communication with clients, I think you get guys accurate are... forecasts, and close those money-making sales. Jerry, yeah, close that deal right now. Using the Kanban view, each opportunity is presented as a card with all essential information in the front. Each stage provides an overview of expected revenue and you can easily drag them from one stage to another like a board of sticky notes. When talking to your client about pitching your business and closing those deals, you can send emails, schedule calls and meetings and have internal give me this, exchanges all from within the I gotta give me this Udu sponsorship for all the fucking business heads in the chat, dude. They're missing out. Not hitting me with a sponsor. 
ensuring easy access to discussion history. You can also forecast and track your results with revenue forecasts. So no more juggling a million platforms just to get a job done with Udu CRM application. You can do everything. Has this brand seen his videos? Yes, every brand that he does advertisements for literally watch his videos and give him notes on what is unacceptable and what is allowed 100 percent best part is you can use the crm app for free since udu's first app is free for life with unlimited hosting and support so get your business organized today by clicking on my link in the description to get started for free with udu all right back to testing the boot udu <laughs> Isn't that scary? Like, what if it blows up on your foot? Like, while you have that shit on. You put that shit on. Bro, by the way, that's drip. Certified drip. What's your go-to cold brew? Volant Coconut. And I tried for days to get this to work. Making changes to the ball pressure. the placement of the ball. I even changed to a basketball. I glued a piece of metal to the ball. I even welded up a brand new frame to hold the ball better and swing the boot harder, but nothing worked. And after 30 or so miss hits, I finally got it working. That was with the soccer ball. Yeah. Okay, it was a very, very simple solution, which is really good. Well, I thought I did until I watched the slow-mo. And on that attempt, I had the carriage loose and just the momentum of the swinging leg set the round off before it contacted the ball. So I tried some more with no success. And I think there are two problems. The impact on the ball on the front of the hammer is not transferring into the rounds, which is weird because if there's a gap on the carriage, it's able to get a run up and then it is enough. And also the firing pins are not very good. So I abandoned all my hard work making this T-slot firing pin and just put some welds on the back and then sharpen those into points, which will squish the rounds. But it still didn't work. But then I started thinking about that shot that did work when the carriage slammed back into the firing pins. And I thought there would be no difference if the ball hits the hammer with the carriage already resting on the firing pins compared to a loose carriage. But there obviously is. So I'm going to try something janky and put a toothpick in the rail here, which will keep the carriage away from the block, but then hopefully the impact of the ball will snap it, shooting the carriage back into the firing pins. That's insane. And that looked great until I watched the slow-mo and I got another premature ejaculation. But at least I managed to do a trick shot while having it. Fuck, we missed that. But at least I managed to do a trick shot while having it. Oh, that's sick. So I upgraded the toothpick to a bamboo skewer and gave that a go. And I finally got it to work. And the chronograph told me it was going at 28 meters a second or 110 kilometers per hour. The exact same reading my foot got. So it looks like it's time to put it on my foot and see if I can beat that. But before I do, I'm gonna use someone else's leg, which I put the boot in. So that way I can see if the recoil will just shatter my shin bone. And while I'm doing all this and mucking around with blanks, I'm obviously being safe and I'm always keeping it unloaded while putting the shoe on and clamping the slippery bone into the vise. Which is why I don't have a hammer shaped dent in my knee from when it didn't misfire when it slipped out of the vise and slammed into the floor. <laughs> so after letting my hearing recover, <laughs> I decided I am not going to test it on the cow leg bone as it's way thicker than my leg so it wouldn't even be an accurate safety test but I am going to try one more thing to make it go even faster, which might just destroy it. At the moment, these pistons aren't airtight in the holes, but I can put wadding down there to make it move a lot faster. 
So I put these in, which should make an airtight seal. And that was a lot louder and blew the whole thing up. Oh, the ball bearings came out. And didn't even give me a faster speed. So I tried again. The ball huh. completely deflated. Oh my God, it blew, it's a, that, okay, okay, that, that's a gun. That, it is turning, it is officially turning into the doohickey. This we are now officially in doohickey territory. This is the type of shit that got Shinzo Abe, okay? He has officially made a Shinzo Abe killer boot. That's crazy. And I popped the ball and I also bent the square tube, which is really good to know as my shin bone definitely wouldn't survive a blast like that. But at least the boot is working. Is it legal to use on a soccer field? No. Is it legal anywhere in the world? Hey, Mark. Yeah. No, no, no. Well, yeah, no, I just wanted a bit of legal advice because I've essentially made a shoe with a gun on the bottom. But it does look pretty cool. It does. Oh! So now I still want to beat the fastest kick ever, but I'm also trying to beat the record for longest goal in soccer, which is 96 meters, which is why I put this goal 97 meters away. Also, I didn't bring batteries for the speed measurer, so we're mainly going for distance. I think there is Wait, no. zero chance you're going to get into that goal. <laughs> I think there is zero chance you can kick that far and get into the goal. Me? Yeah. You? Or just me? Not on the full, I don't think I can do that. That's crazy, bro. You're testing you're testing a Balkan man right there. That's not a Balkan boy, but a Balkan man. He will do it. Nice. That's actually pretty good. Oh yeah? I reckon I'm not gonna get it anywhere near. He's gonna fall into that hole right there. <laughs> oh, okay. oh god. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, Alexa, come on, brother. Brother, what? Nor, Alexa, nor. Most skilled Serbian? Yeah, well, his his genes only kick in for basketball. Pretty good. So as long as it kicks further than that. Then it's then it's a superhuman device. Well, a... I'm very good at kicking. <laughs> yeah. you know, like... Am I standing in front of it? Why is that like Don't stand in front of it. What is wrong with you? Imagine selling this to some of the top soccer teams in the world. Like Imagine selling to the Kerala Blasters. Kerala Blasters. It's a perfect name. It's a perfect name. Well, we can if it works, we can pitch it to them. <laughs> loaded. Probably should have put this in before. <laughs> You're putting the trigger in now while it's loaded. Okay. Elden Ring after reacts, yes. Okay, you, yeah, you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Whoa! Yeah! That actually went pretty far. Yeah, that worked really well. Almost as strong as me. And the first shot went all right. It went maybe a little bit further than my kick, but after looking at the shells, they broke at the back. So a lot of the gas escaped out the rear and not down the barrels. So I tried again with a lighter kick. I need to not stand in front of this while I'm putting it, putting it in. <laughs> Fire's out now. Oh, gum shit filming from oh. Three, two, one. As loud as it was at home. In the garage. And that kick was way worse. So I'm not gonna get the distance I want. So I moved the car closer, and now I'm gonna take some free kicks from around 30 meters away. And for some reason, Alexa agreed to be in the goals. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Oh, that's a great shot. That's pretty fucking fast, dude. Yeah. But I'm like, I don't want to be part of the 
<laughs> and that one worked really well. The ball traveled 30 meters in just over half a second, meaning the ball was traveling at like 45 meters a second, which is 160 Ks or 100 miles per hour, which is 40 kilometers faster than David Beckham's foot when he drove his car into a pole. And it's also three kilometers faster than his fastest ever kick. Sullivan off his line. Okay, my turn. Okay, whenever you're ready. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Hey! <laughs> Alexa, this is why I do videos. <laughs> and it's pretty inconsistent. I think it depends on if the rounds break at the back or not, and how good my wadding is. And we did a couple more shots, but it only got worse. Two, one. Oh. Hey. Do you all want to go in front? I'd of love to. And then, and you can pull the thing as well yeah. if you want. Okay. Yeah. Everyone in the middle. We're not doing it. Okay. Okay. They completely gave up on face protection, which is crazy. And overall, the bro, yeah, they that's a little confidence they have, dude. You could literally the face protection doesn't even matter, dude. If that fucking thing, if that hammer flies out, I feel like you're dead, right? Like, this shoe it's did a gun, right. dude. It's probably slightly worse than my normal foot kicking a soccer ball. That's much harder. <laughs> Also, if there are any cops watching this video, this whole thing was just a dream. Thank you so much for watching. If you